Good afternoon. Welcome to our presentation on responding on incumbent challenges in Nova Scotia. We are Sebastian Gibson, Cameron Pride, myself, Mahbub Rahman, and Divya Thomas from Dalhousie University. Next slide, please. Encampments and rough sleeping has significant negative impacts on public health and safety for the campers and also in the community as a whole. The current encampment challenge is a complex problem which is associated with a number of social and economic issues. But this is not an unsolvable problem. It can be solved with strong government leadership and responsibility. And to solve this problem, the broader social problem of homelessness need to be addressed. Next slide, please. Homelessness is a situation where a person lacks stable, permanent, and appropriate housing. In the housing ownership spectrum, homeless people are at the end. And the core of solving homelessness problem is to shift these homeless people towards affordable housing in the housing spectrum. But recently, the opposite has been happening. Due to lack of affordable housing and other factors, a lot of people who have housing are falling into the crack and the homeless population is growing. Encampments are manifestation of this homeless problem, which is a symptom of a bigger issue. The homeless equity can be chronic. Those who are homeless for longer period can be episodic. Those who have become homeless in different period of their life and can be transitional for those who are homeless for a shorter period of time. All of this complex problem indicate that we have a uh, encampment problem, which is a symptom of homelessness issue. And this is complex, but it is solvable as it is done in many jurisdictions. Next slide, please. So in Canada, homelessness is the rise as there is a reduction of public system capacity. The current emergency home shelter system is designed to support individuals for short duration and only for basic survival needs like shelter, food, and security. Consequently, the existing inadequate housing options and services are not capable of meeting those increasingly complex individual needs. To solve this problem, we need to close the gap between the reduction in public system capacity and the complex individual needs. Next slide, please. So from 80s, where there are a small number of large single men experiencing homelessness, we see in last couple of decades that thousands of Canadians are homeless in a given night. There are hundred thousands of Canadian experiences homeless in a year. And the decline of public system capacity is caused by withdrawal of federal government housing and homelessness in the 90s. And they're downloading the responsibility of these on provinces. We in turn the download some of the responsibility towards municipalities and non-for-profits. And this decline resulted in lack of expertise and capacity within the government on housing and homelessness service delivery. We saw decline in overall level of resources provided for housing and homelessness. And also it led to a weaker intergovernment and intersectional coordination and collaboration. To address the homelessness issue, we need to address all of these factors. Next slide, please. So homeless population is diverse. As this used to be like single individual are no more. We have a lot of women and families in the homeless population who are uh, who address not who are not addressed by the system capacity and their support system. And also, we have seen a lot of women and families are at risk of homelessness, and due to various factors like uh, abuse, violence, and also the other factors mentioned, we've seen increasing number of youths and older adult seniors are in the homeless population. The indigenous peoples are a number of uh, this homeless population. One in eight urban indigenous people are at risk of homelessness, where the general population is more than one in 100. We see there is 2S LGBTQ plus population in the homelessness where are on the both side, they're at risk of being homelessness for various reasons, and also their needs are not addressed. The, the diverse factors for addresses by this population create these complex needs, which are current system are not offering either in terms of housing options or the service provided. So people are have no choice to become uh, sleep outside, creating those encampment, and this indicate the symptom of the problem of homelessness which need to be solved by us immediately. Next slide, please. Now we are transitioning to a focus on homelessness in Nova Scotia. 
So in Nova Scotia, housing and homelessness are definitive areas of provincial responsibility. The government of Nova Scotia has a jurisdictional mandate to provide housing programs and services for people with low to moderate incomes, and that includes housing options for those experiencing homelessness. To date, encampment challenges in the province have been confined to the Halifax Regional Municipality, or HRM. So HRM is a county in Nova Scotia, shown here in red on the slide, with approximately 500,000 people and around 50% of Nova Scotia's population. So there are actually two distinct problems at hand in the province. There's homelessness in HRM, and then there's homelessness in the rest of the province. Unfortunately, due to poor and uncoordinated data collection, there's an inadequate knowledge of the scope of the problem outside of HRM. Consequently, we're focusing this presentation and our solutions exclusively on HRM, although we recognize the importance of addressing these broader issues as well. Within the Halifax Regional Municipality, there has been a substantial increase in the homeless population over recent years. So whereas in 2019, there were approximately 125 chronic homeless people, this more than doubled to 375 in 2022, so a very significant increase. This has been associated with the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent closing of shelter capacity in the province, unemployment and lost incomes also associated, associated with the pandemic, as well as the worsening housing crisis in the city where, where Halifax has some of the lowest vacancy rates of 1%. Next slide, please. There have been some very significant encampment challenges in HRM. So in the winter of 2021, the not-for-profit group Halifax Mutual Aid began installing built structures on municipal land. Over the summer, the city moved to disband them to enforce its parks bylaw, and this led to significant clashes between police and protesters shown here. Largely as a result of this political fallout, the city of Halifax moved and then allocated approximately 4 million for tiny homes to house around 70 people. The province also provided funding for wraparound services. However, this did not address the entire scope of the problem and there are encampments that remain in the city. There is a large encampment of approximately 25 people in the city. These crisis shelters by Halifax Mutual Aid continue to be placed. Next slide, please. It's critical to discuss who is currently doing what regarding homelessness in the province. So a really recent positive development is the transition of an old, a former hotel to supportive housing. So this is a multi-governmental partnership with the federal government, the provincial government, and HRM all providing financial contrib contributions and it being operated by a not-for-profit. Not and this will provide 65 spaces of supportive housing. However, and over the last several decades, there has been a history of weak collabor collaboration between the province and HRM, particularly on homelessness. The HRM largely sees homelessness as an area of provincial responsibility and has been unwilling to step into a larger role until recent events in this past summer. The level of collaboration between the two is improving, but there remain gaps to effective coordination. The province has contributed significantly towards housing and to a lesser extent homelessness. So the government of Nova Scotia is matching 530 million for affordable housing, along with the federal government through a bilateral agreement. It provided 12 million in 2020, 2001 for homelessness. And as I mentioned, the federal government has contributed significantly to the development of affordable housing in Halifax, but to a lesser extent homelessness. So through money available under the national housing strategy and uh, more specifically the rapid housing initiative, a number of afford affordable projects have been funded um, in the city. Additionally, the federal government is funding the Affordable Housing Association of Nova Scotia to be the lead entity implement, implementing coordinated access, and it has received approximately $7 million to do so. Next slide, please. It's very critical to discuss best practices regarding addressing homelessness. So Housing First is an innovative harm reduction approach that focuses on quickly moving people from homelessness into stable housing and then providing them with services that address the underlying issues that got them there in the first place. Coordinated access is essentially the way through which Housing First is implemented. It's the system through which a person ent it enters the system and then is matched to the appropriate housing and supports shown in the figure here. System planning is a really innovative approach that focuses on moving people, or sorry, sorry shifting the entire homeless serving system towards Housing First and working towards system integration. This approach has been developed and implemented notably in places like Medicine Hat, Alberta, and is also being put into place across the country from Hamilton to Regina. There are three keys to the implementation of Housing First. 
These are capital investments in housing supply, investments in services and supports that go into it, um, in tandem with the supply and strong organizational leadership and capacity. Next slide, please. With that, let's discuss the options we have that tackle this challenging but ultimately solvable issue. First, we have the option that requires the least in the way of systems-wide changes. Simply put, to stay the course that the province of Nova Scotia has begun, with the addition of targeted increases of support to the Halifax Regional Municipality, where the problem is most acute. We believe that many of the actions that the government of Nova Scotia has taken are sufficient for dealing with the symptoms of homelessness, such as the Housing First pilot, which studies have shown lead to a substantial reduction in costs and result in better outcomes. Essentially, the province, province of Nova Scotia has started to take actions to increase system capacity and boost individual outcomes. We think that this momentum could easily be sustained and built upon. With the continuation of wraparound services for the HRM and with additional funding to ensure that the city has the capacity to respond to new encampments, this represents a very viable option for dealing with the problem, especially in the short term. Next slide, please. Our second option is more transformative than the first. Recognizing that the responsibility for this issue needs to be clearly delineated, this approach positions the province as a resource provider for not-for-profits who lack the resources, but not the expertise or will to deal with homelessness. For instance, the North End Community Health Center currently runs a mobile outreach street health program, one that is vital but cannot be scaled up due to resource constraints. By providing targeted investments and positioning the provincial government as a source of funding and support, not-for-profits can apply assertive community treatment strategies to ensure that the needs of individuals are being met. This option leverages on-the-ground expertise and positions this as a problem that the government plays a fully supportive but still vital role in solving and supplements existing federal and municipal funding streams. Next slide, please. Our final option is the boldest and most transformative. We're proposing that the province take full actual responsibility for the problem and takes on a coordinating and governing role. Housing is fundamentally a provincial responsibility and failing to step into a leadership role on this could have severe implications as the problem continues to worsen. The core element of this approach is to establish a province-led governance table to implement a systems planning approach with the cooperation of major stakeholders. While this does involve major capital housing projects, it goes beyond and takes a preventative approach, including funding affordable housing initiatives, as well as expanding the system's capacity to meet the needs of high-risk populations. It recognizes that homelessness is a symptom of other very solvable issues, and while addressing those factors, factors are expensive, they pay significant dividends in the long term. So yes, this approach is resource intensive, but it will have multi-sectoral benefits across employment, justice, and health care, and if executed properly, can consist of a major win for the province of Nova, Nova Scotia. Next slide, please. So we've established four criteria in order to differentiate these options. How well they address the root causes of homelessness, how well they meet the diverse range of individual needs, the ability they have to increase coordination and establish leadership, and how long it will take to implement them. In terms of the impact on causal factors, option one does the least. The actions being taken by the province are not holistic and focus on addressing the symptoms, even though they do that very well. Option two focuses on the preventative services that not-for-profits can provide but is primarily geared towards the symptoms. Option three, by focusing on health and housing, can take a much more preventative approach. For the second criteria, both options one and two expand services in order to meet individual needs, anything from tiny houses to mobile health units, but neither do it as well as option three, which includes preventative and population targeted programming and the expansion of case management services. For the third criteria, only option three clearly establishes leadership for this through a province-led governance table, which is vital. Without better coordination and focused intent and accountability for the problem, initiatives to address homelessness will be ineffective in the long term. Option one does nothing to establish responsibility and option two only delegates it. In terms of our final criteria, option one is the fastest to implement as it builds on existing actions being taken by the province. Option two takes longer, as the monitoring resources and funding streams need to be put into place, and not-for-profits will need time to expand their programming. A fully transformative and province-driven approach will take years before it can effectively resolve the problem, making option three by far the slowest. Looking at our four criteria, the proposed way forward is clear. It's option three. A bold, transformative approach in which leadership is clearly established by the government of Nova Scotia. However, as our criteria show, this strategy has significant time to action. As such, we've incorporated elements of options one and two into our implementation plan to ensure that the symptoms of homelessness can be addressed in the short term. Next slide, please. 
I will now discuss the implementation plan of option three. So in the short term, we need to establish a province-led governance table to implement a system planning approach to housing first, then enhance HRM's capacity to address encampments. In the medium term, we need to increase capital investments and services to address the diverse range of housing needs for chronic homeless population. Invest in population-specific housing and supports for Indigenous people, African Nova Scotians, youth, 2S LGBTQ+, and women and expand the strength and coordinated access. In the long term, we need to invest in homelessness prevention with federal funding and improved discharge planning. Next slide, please. So let's get into specifics. In the short term, our goal should be to support those who are unsheltered. And we recommend the establishment of a province-led governance table to implement a system planning approach to housing first. And this can be accomplished by building on the housing and homelessness partner partnership and expanding the leadership role of provinces. This action would fall within existing mandates and roles of provincial staff, making it very feasible. The next step would be to fund HRM's capacity to address encampments. And this can be accomplished by funding the expansion of modular units and wraparound services for the 40 current unsheltered individuals in HRM. We estimate that this will cost approximately 3.5 million for housing for one year and 1.6 million over five years for services. In the medium term, the focus should be on supporting people experiencing chronic homelessness. And this can be done through capital investments to address housing needs for the 376 individuals identified in HRM. This is estimated to cost 7,500,000 for services over 10 years, 13 million for housing, and 500,000 over 10 years for operations. And these numbers are all based on recent expenditures in other jurisdictions, namely Regina, Saskatchewan. The implementation plan should also include development of population specific service delivery. And to accomplish this, we will have to consult community and those living with lived experiences. And expenditures are expected and to be determined in the future. We also need to expand and strengthen coordinated access. And this can be done by matching current federal government support under the Reaching Home Initiative. We estimate this will cost 10 million total over five years. Next slide, please. So in the long term, our focus should be on homelessness prevention. And we can accomplish this by creating a prevention fund, implementing rental assistance program for those in housing need, in core housing need, and by tapping into federal funding through the Reaching Home Initiative. This is estimated to cost 230,000 annually for 10 years. That's $4,000 per person for 58,000 people living right now in the low income measure within HRM. Overall, it is estimated to cost 18 million annually over 10 years. Lastly, we need to achieve homelessness prevention by addressing systemic inflows into homelessness. And this means modernizing public systems. Expenditures are expected and to be determined. Overall, our plan will cost a total of 285 million plus a 20% contingency planning. And this gives us a product of 342 million over 10 years. Next slide, please. So we have identified the following provincial departments, not-for-profit organizations, and federal and municipal stakeholders as key actors to the successful implementation of our plan. Next slide, please. We've also identified risks. The first being a lack of political will. We've identified this risk as medium probability, but very high severity. The government of Nova Scotia was elected on a mandate to fix the healthcare system. And since homelessness intersects closely with health issues, we argue that this fits within their mandate. Moreover, Housing First has spillover effects on public systems and leads to a $9,000 cost savings per person. Given this, and as encampments worsen and become more visible, taking leadership will result in a political win for our province. The next risk that we identified is negative perceptions. This is highly probable, but has a low severity risk. And we recommend mitigating this risk by implementing a comprehensive communication plan that emphasizes the cost savings within our public systems. Our final risk that we identified is coordination challenges. 
nonprofit organizations have cons consistently demanded a greater response into this issue. And establishing provincial leadership is necessary, but establishing trust is of utmost importance if we want this plan to be successful. And this means that the province must focus on building trust and maintaining relationships by demonstrating positive outcomes. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, the government of Nova Scotia can solve the problem of encampments by addressing the broader problem of homelessness. By implementing a transformative shift with strong provincial leadership, we can build on our existing strengths to deliver services and care to those experiencing homelessness in Nova Scotia. Thank you so much. Well, uh, thank you very much, Tiger Team, for a very concise and uh, and uh, and very interesting presentation. I'll turn to my colleagues now. We'll start with uh, Pam McCurry. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. This was uh, very um, very interesting. Um, it's um, it's a, a complex problem and you're presenting kind of a complex solution to it, right? Um, with, uh, with several moving parts. Um, I'm interested um, at the moment in the role of, of the federal government in this. You've talked about the, um, the investment that the federal government um, is making through um, reaching home, um, their reaching home uh, program. Um, is there, what would, are you looking for a greater investment or, or, or uh, money within the existing investment? Um, and what would be, what would inspire the federal government to, um, to, um, to participate, to engage fully in, in the manner that you, that you uh, most like to see? Are there policy reasons? Are there legal obligations? What would you see there? Who wants to take that? I will take the question. Thank you for okay. the question. Yeah. Yes, so I, there are several components that I will of your question that I will answer. So currently within Nova Scotia, the federal government is funding the implementation of a coordinated access system in the homeless serving system. And money for that is being provided to the Affordable Housing Association and which they're administering. There has also been a significant amount of federal funding for various types of affordable housing projects and these have often been through multi-level partnerships. So there has been a strong federal role. For the implementation of our proposal, we are looking to tap into additional federal investment. Um, we think that this is if, particularly for our long-term strategy of addressing um, homelessness prevention and with a focus primarily on affordable housing, recognizing that a lack of affordable housing is a really prominent factor that drives people to homelessness. So given that we are really relying on the feds for funding on affordable housing, we think that this is feasible because the feds have put up significant money for, for affordable housing in the first place. And we think that ultimately that there is a really strong alignment in terms of the approach that we're proposing and the current approach that is being adopted by the federal government, who is whose reaching home is underpinned by many of the best practices we're talking about. Housing first, the implementation of coordinated access. So there's already very, very strong alignment in terms of these approaches. Okay, let, let me. I'm not. I don't want to cut you off, Sebastian. I want to no, give time good. for lots of questions. There we go. Let me move now to Trina Fraser. Trina, thank you. Um, so the question that I've been thinking on is um, just knowing that Nova Scotia has one of the largest African Nova Scotian communities. And we know that homelessness affects everyone, no matter color, race, creed, no matter what. Um, how, how could we see more of the African Nova Scotian community's voices being at the table to help find solutions for communities within? Okay. Who wants to respond now? I can also answer that question as okay, well as anybody else would like to. Yeah. I, I completely agree. Um, there's a very, the, the African Nova Scotian community in Nova Scotia and uh, Nova Scotia um, are overrepresented over in the homeless population. And it is really critical to do something to address that systemic, uh, the systemic barriers that put them there in the first place. Um, so I think that there are a few ways to address this issue. A very key one is the way that we integrate um, a, uh, and we talk about this in our solutions, but a population specific lens in program and service delivery 
And that is used through community, like very integrated community engagement sessions that um, feed back into policy development in a kind of holistic way. And I, I think that what is really critical too is the prioritization of lived experience in the design of policy, particularly the lived experience of marginalized populations who experience systemic discrimination and systemic racism that contributes to the higher rates of homelessness in the first place. So I absolutely agree I, with the prominence of the issue. And I think that there are some approaches, some, some models for bringing in those voices to the table, to the policy development process and to inform policy and service delivery that can lead to better outcomes. Okay, thank you. And let me move to Alan Northcott. Alan, the floor is yours. Thank you for your presentation. I, you know, it's, I think as has been said by one of my colleagues, a complex issue, you're offering a complex solution. Uh, one of the, one of the hiccups in all of this, it seems to me is, is research evidence. So, you know, we know we have pretty good evidence about homelessness on a number of dimensions, but a lot less when it comes to encampments and rough sleeping. Could you connect the dots a bit for us about how, to what extent has evidence framed the solutions that you're offering? Uh, and a related question is what, you know, when you're looking at the evidence that's available, what, what sort of key questions did it uncover that would need to be answered? Who wants to take that one? Take that would one. anyone like- Okay, Mababur, go ahead. Mababur, you're over to you. Yes, I think uh, we're seeing a uh, recent encampment across the country in different cities. So we identify this uh, as a symptom of bigger problem of homelessness. So uh, with the increasing need of diverse population, which uh, the current shelter system is not addressing, people are choosing to be camp outside rather than uh, if there is a option to move into the shelter system. So that's being increasing. And our we are addressing this problem is if we can address the bigger problem of homelessness, uh, also, uh, with our uh, option uh, for a longer term solution, we can also address uh, this ongoing issue of encampment because if they can have their needs uh, within uh, a housing solution and also other services provided, uh, obviously people don't want to sleep in the camps. It's not, it's their, they have no other choice to be or there's no affordable housing with uh, related services so that they can tap on. So I think if we can address the core of the issue of homelessness with the service and uh, appropriate housing, uh, the income issue can be solved. Hey, thank you. Let me turn to Janet Golding. Janet. No, thanks. Thanks very much, and and um, thanks to the to the presenters for their their presentation. Um, super interesting. Um, I guess my question kind of links back to, to Trina's around uh, the intersectionality, and um, uh, I was wondering if you had a view on, on sort of how those sort of population-specific services could be developed to um, target not just Black, uh, the Black population, but the Indigenous population in Nova Scotia, and, and what challenges or um, opportunities you see there. Um, I can take that one. Uh, the individual po uh, indigenous population in Nova Scotia has uh, obviously uh, specific needs. Uh, the urban uh, individual indigenous community, uh, a lot of them are tasked with like Mi'kmaq Native Friendship Center and Mi'kmaq Native Friendship Centers trying to provide appropriate services towards them. So I think the key partnership here with the keep a partnership with the Mi'kmaq Native Friendship Center and other indigenous uh, urban groups to have an appropriate system that uh, can be uh, developed over time. Because if we there is no like one system that fits all across all uh, the solution and the current solution we have shelter system doesn't consider those uh, uh, indigenous uh, urban population their needs and their cultural uh, appreciation so i think uh, it's very important to partner with those uh, urban indigenous uh, leaders the uh, service centers and bringing them into the fold so that we can develop those services appropriate for them Thank you. Uh, we've got time for one more quick question from James Hughes and one more quick answer, a concise answer, James. So my, 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 my question is, uh, is simply this. Yes, uh, if we can solve the causes of homelessness, we will deal with the encampments. But that is, and that's a symptom uh, of uh, much larger forces at play. But I want to ask you about the symptom. And I want to ask you and give you the chance to talk about encampments and precisely what your strategy is to address it in the immediate short term. All I've heard so far is housing uh, uh, modular units. Um, but I, I, I'd like you to speak to 
Um, how, how that happens? Are there other layers to this? And who's involved in, in, in trying to address the immediate issue of encampments? Okay, team, you got 20 seconds. Just a few, a few quick thoughts. So, so I can... I can take go this. ahead. Go ahead. So the go ahead. the HRM and the province of Nova Scotia, with things like the tiny homes um, and like mobile shelters, how are already taking steps, right? So we want to build on this. We want to make them more specific to individual needs. Um, but we, we do recognize that dealing with the encampments is the priority. So again, the housing first is designed to get them immediately into housing where their long-term needs can be addressed. So it's very much what can we do to increase the immediate housing stock, build on what okay. the province and the city has done, and then transition them into more permanent long-term solutions. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Thank you.